Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Underwood Baptist Church Young Adult Sunday School Class Daily Devotional for Saturday, July the 2nd. That's right, folks, the year's more than half over. We're already in July. I hope uh, hope this finds you well and do, uh, doing well this Saturday. Um, so today, my uh, the verses I'm going to be that we'll be covering is 2 Peter 2, 20 through 22. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome, the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they had known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb, the dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. Okay, so I, I got to thinking, and you know, as we're about to celebrate a, another um, an, another birthday of our great country, I thought to myself, um, do, do we consider ourselves a Christian nation? And so I found an article that I thought I found it very interesting, and I'm going to be paraphrasing some of this article uh, from the Washington Post, October 24, 2020. So this is two years ago. It says, um, "One nation under God." More and more Americans don't think so. Uh, is the title of the article. In the United States, one of the most consequential cultural changes of our time may be the swift and seemingly accelerating decline of religious commitment. Historically, Americans have recorded relatively high levels of worship service attendance and belief in God as compared with their peers in advanced industrial societies such as Europe or Japan. The, Euro the U.S. example seemed to show that faith could survive in an environment dominated by science and technology. A forthcoming book by University of Michigan political scientist Robert Englehart, however, suggests that the United States is now rapidly catching up with the trend towards secularization elsewhere. When asked to express the importance of God in their lives on a scale of 1 to 10, with 1 being not at all important and 10 being very important, Americans rated God at an average of 4.6 in 2017. Wow, so I can only imagine how far that's fallen today down from just 8.2 and ju just over a decade earlier. A major source of this country's relative social and political conservatism is essentially disappearing with potentially far-reaching implications for everything from criminal justice to education to foreign policy. And we're seeing that today. Um, increasingly, the two political parties are not characterized by their respective predominant religious groups but whether their adherents belong to any religion at all. 38% of Democrats say they regularly attend services. For Republicans, the figure is still only 54%. The U.S. importance of God's score started higher than the others and had more room to fall. Still, um, Englehart's findings reinforces those the Pew Research Center published last October showing that the share of Americans claiming none is their religious affiliation had grown from 16% to 26% since 2007. And remember, this article is almost two years old. Fewer than half of Americans now attend services regularly, regularly with only 35% of millennials going at least once a month. Why the dramatic change in nearly a decade? Englehart portrays the U.S. shift as a part of a global trend also uh, perceptible in 43 of the 49 countries containing 60% of the world's population that he studied. That trend in turn reflects an even more sweeping one. Social and economic development renders human survival less precarious, human suffering less dramatic, and human beings less needful of existential comfort or guidance from age-old traditions. Now, I'm going to stop right there, um, and I'm not going to really go any further, 
because I, I've had my notes here and that's about all it really needs to be said uh, from this article, right? But it's a major problem, right? We definitely need to be one nation under God. And we're under God whether people want to admit it or not. You know, so, I mean, and let's think back about some of the punishments that happened to Israel, how many times they were sent into captivity because they disobeyed God, because they, uh, you know, they would, they would create idols and worship them instead of God. And there's many more examples that I could use. But um, I'm going to go back and kind of talk a little bit more about those passages that I read from uh, Second Peter. As in those passages, Peter was raising a concern that those that uh, who for a time escaped the pollution and defilement of the world when they heard about the Lord Jesus, kind of like, uh, you know, Christians do whenever they first accept the Lord and up in a far worse and end up in a far worse state when they return to the world's entanglements. That's right, because our eyes are open that we need the Lord and then we go back to the world and what happens? It's worse. This verse has caused many Christians to think that their salvation is lost. Um, if they become discouraged, walk away from their faith for a time, or, be, or engage in worldly carnality. It is therefore very important for us to read every single verse and take it in context and identify who is being referenced. So, you know, we just have to... Uh, we have to read, like it said, and take in the context of the verses. No, it does not mean that we lose our salvation. Once you're saved, always saved, and never forget that. Well, I hope you have a very happy 4th of July. Um, spend time with your family. Uh, even though our country is uh, not what she once was, we certainly praise God for what we have left. And I just would invite each and every one of you just to continue the good fight um, and keep lifting this lifting our country and our leaders up in prayer and um, I'll just close this out in a word of prayer Father we thank you so much for this day we thank you for being able to bring this message just to send out a piece of your word Lord to this lost and dying world Father if anybody watching Lord not know you as their personal Lord and Savior Lord that they would get their salvation cell before it's eternally too late Lord we just lift up our country, Lord, to you that uh, that we would turn from our wicked ways, Father, because we have fallen so far. We've fallen so far from you, Lord, that you would stir your people in a way that we haven't been stirred in a hundred years, Lord, that we would just wake up and do what we need to do, Lord. And Father, we thank you for forgiving us, Lord, where we fail your time and time again, Lord, and we thank you for the blessings, Lord, that you give us that we don't deserve each and every day, Father. I ask now that you go with us, guide us, and direct us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, thank you all for watching, and I hope you have a, a great Saturday and a great 4th of July. We'll talk soon.